I, I consider uh, dimensionality to be a hierarchy. Some people might consider it to be uh, simply alternative universes. So what, whatever those connections are, uh, that's, that would be like, in a sense, the sacramental. Like say, a wheel rotating and the, the centroid of the wheel being still. Whereas, so that you've gone from a situation where energy is efficacious by motion to where energy is efficacious without motion. Uh, a pendulum swinging back and forth like this. The point at which it changes its direction, in a sense, is out of the system. That's like the singularity. The, of course, like a, a black hole is the most dramatic form of singularity that, that physicists define. I, I think there are there are singularities in, uh, in, in, in say the whole realm of temporality, like the uh, the small space and time between a cause and an effect is a type of singularity. So they're not uh, they're not just defined as something that's far away. They're uh, all about it. Uh, things like the, uh, the Hindu notion of, of the big chakras and acupuncture points are like a constellation of singularities throughout our body which are used to, uh, to organize all our cells into a kind of intercellular communication system. These, uh, these are the things that are involved. And now I'd like to get right into the, uh, the slides. Let's see, it's just a button here. I'd like to press it for the first slide. I think that we can start with, uh, say, Egypt and move to Greece. Um, one, of, one of the forms that occurs in the visionary genre is the, the oral display, like re a relationship to the sun. Of course, the, the Egyptians, the sine qua non of, of the sun, like the pyramid itself, represents a ray because it, it's re actually built metaphysically from the top down so that it forms like a ray. So that the, the, uh, the proportioning system, uh, the, the sacred geometry, is all connected to moving to this point and going back to an, uh, to an origin. Okay. And we, the, uh, an, another uh, consideration is like uh, astral projection. The concern with uh, with death the, the Egyptians had was not, in a sense, a, uh, a, a kind of necrophilia, but simply a, an idea that there were definite transitions between life and death, and that they used what what I would consider uh, na natural singularities in their in their operations. So that I, I in this particular painting. I took on the task in, in Hoptet, the first architect that's in recorded history, were to be alive today. What would he do? And uh, so that I, I thought that since they're interested in the move, movement, uh, the movement of the Ka, that, that part of the Egyptian personality that we might call the astral body, uh, that, that he'd be interested in an in alternative modes of travel. Uh, from the 19th century into the 20th century, when you get a great interest in, in, in the occult, uh, you also had a transition from things like, like kite technology, uh, fibral tension technology, into uh, more stylism. So I, I went back to that and said, if there could be a kite boat, this would provide a kind of an analog to the way uh, the, the astral body works, with the kite as the astral body, the, the boat as the, uh, as the physical body, and the kite spring as, as the etheric cord. The car symbol, the arms raised up like that, become uh, a way of, 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 say, of organizing the panel and actually in, in developing the kite itself so that it, it looks like uh, sets of upraised arms. I, I'm, I'm going to go rather quickly and uh, so that uh, we'll have time for questions. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 